Watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, we are, <laughs> we're in hell right now. We have been going through all kinds of stuff. Um, I think what people do so often is they enjoy playing with our emotions. And they come up with things that may or may not be true. And it's always something to talk about because it's the Cowboys and we all respond. Jerry Jones knows this, of course, because his whole thing is to keep you hooked. He wants you there. He loves the controversy. He admits it. And so only the Cowboys have the NFL leading receiver, NFL leading receiver, and say he's garbage and get rid of him and let's get some draft picks. I want you to think about some things here because we're talking about C.D. Lamb and whether or not C.D. Lamb should get paid. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say that you get what your money pays for. Now, I can't guarantee what C.D. Lamb will be going forward, but what I have to say is he is pretty good. I don't think you understand how good C.D. Lamb has been. Now, the question, of course, is because right now we're hearing all kinds of rumors uh, about C.D. Lamb that, you know, the Cowboys, I heard a rumor that the Cowboys could trade him to Buffalo for a couple of number twos and like a three. Um, I've heard um, other crazy things that, you know, like from – his contract, they've blown it up and said it could be a $155 million contract and, and so on to kind of give the shock, shock and awe value and stuff to you. Now, here's the thing I want you to understand because we still keep living the numbers in the past, okay? $30 million today isn't the same as it was five years ago. I want you to understand, I know it's crazy because we don't deal with that kind of money. But the thing is, is $30 million five years ago was top money for a quarterback. Now we're talking about top money for a quarterback, possibly being $60 million. And it's not going to stay there. It will continue to grow. It's really more about the percentages. And so as we look here and we talk about C.D. Lamb, who last year had 12 TDs, 1,749 yards, 135 receptions. And in his career, I want to put up a statistic here for you guys. Let me pull this on over. I want you to understand, CeeDee Lamb has been here with the Cowboys for four years. Four years. Not a full career, not like forever, like Father Time, Jason Witten. Jason Witten has the all-time yardage record for the Cowboys, okay, um, of 12,977 uh, 12, yards. The Playmaker has 11,904 yards. Tony Thrillhill, less than eight. Drew Pearson, less than eight. Des Bryant, less than eight. Bob Bullet Hayes, right there, 7,200. And then you've got C.D. Lamb after four years at 5,145 yards. Now, I know that this is a different era than back when Drew Pearson played. But for C.D. Lamb after four years to be eighth on the Dallas Cowboys, um, wide receiver leading yards says a hell of a lot. When you start to think about the numbers that he's putting up, along with the quarterback who's throwing to him, understand that of all time, that season that Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb, I believe is fourth all time season between a quarterback and a wide receiver. It's that good. 
to put it another way, I want to put a comparison up here for you guys. Because when we start thinking about what is C.D. Lamb worth, last season, last season, this is Debo Samuels. Now, Debo was hurt for three games. Yards per reception, 14.9 for Debo, 13 for C.D. But see, I'm going to say that for me in my mind, when you have a great running game, like the 49ers do with Christian McCaffrey, I don't think there's anybody out there that will say that the Cowboys had as good of a running attack as San Francisco. Can can we all agree on that? A running game helps because you're putting eight men in the box. There's less guys to go out there and coverage. Can we also agree that George Kittle is better and more experienced than Jake Ferguson? Now, Jake is coming up. Jake Ferguson might be at that level, but they had that guy to go with Christian McCaffrey. And can we say that Brandon Ayuk, he didn't have the season that CD had, but he was pretty good in understanding that he had to share the rock with, of course, Kittle, as well as Christian McCaffrey, and Debo. So here's where it gets to be interesting. As we go through and put this together, CD had 135 receptions to Debo having 60. CD had 12 TDs to Debo's 7. His catch percentage catch percentage 74.6% to 67 for Debo. Now, if you are, you know, I'm, you know, and, and Cowboy fans will say, oh, man, I'll take Debo over C.D. Lamb. Well, I hate to tell you, C.D. stayed healthy, and the physical style that Debo has is not one of those styles that you're going to be able to keep up forever. When you think of, say, Marion Barber, who was, you know, literally the beast there, and he couldn't maintain that for so many years. When you look at quarterbacks that rely on their legs more so than their arm, their careers aren't that long. But here's the thing. Now, now so here's what we have. Debo signed a deal a couple years ago, and he's $23 million a year. $23 million a year. Um, you literally got double the production from CeeDee Lamb. So when you hear a number like 155 million, well, that's seven and a half million dollars more per year than what Debo got. Now, Tariq Hill, I probably should have done this with Tariq Hill's numbers as well. Um, Tariq Hill gets 30, and you have to understand that the bank keeps getting busted each year. So the value when you look at this and say, he put up the numbers of what Brandon Ayuk, the number of catches that Brandon Ayuk and Debo put together combined without having the infrastructure that those other guys had. So you have to look at this and say, there's not a lot of guys that are able to do what he did. Was it enough in the playoffs? No, no. But that's the job of the coach to understand, I've got people with talent Now I've got to make sure that talent is able to perform in the playoffs. That's the key right there. Now, there's been a lot been made up that, you know, we've heard that CeeDee Lamb is, you know, could be holding out. I want you to understand here, a lot of the stuff that we get, a lot of the stuff that we get is not necessarily from the player. It's not necessarily from the team. A lot of this shit is speculation. Taking what's happened in the past or what could possibly be. Okay? There's no, we talked to Jerry Jones and here's it. No, that didn't work. You you basically go to a press conference, he gives you a little bit, and you go buy it. Now, here's an interesting piece right here. Um, CD, who was at the CSA show in Chantilly, Virginia, uh, where we saw Micah Parsons. Like I said, he didn't look worried to me at all. 
Um, he looked actually really, really happy, smiling, spending time with the fans and things. And I'm going to say, because I have slammed um, Micah Parsons as well as CD because I've been to their lines before. Um, Micah Parsons, his rookie year, um, was very disappointing. And it may be because he didn't understand what's going on. But his rookie year, he had his earbuds on. And he looked down, he had his pen, had his pen, sign, next one. Never looked up. And after you go there, you pay your $15 to go in, and then you pay $175 for a signature and things, and you're excited about seeing, you know, how you worship on Sunday and stuff, and you don't even get to make eye contact. You know, people were disappointed. But I'm going to say that they have grown and matured in that and understand it's about the fans. So I was really happy to see that growth right there. So TMZ got this clip from the CSA show. And what they do is you have the players, they come through, you can get photographs with the players. So that's one price. Then you have your autographs and stuff where you actually go in line and get the autograph from them. And then... The players, they have an area where they've got a shitload of helmets and, you know, merchandise, pictures and all that. And so they spend a couple hours just signing stuff, and that's where you buy it online. Um, so when a lot of times when you go through and you're buying something online that's autographed, it's at one of these shows because they get paid to be there to sign all this merchandise and to do those signings. So C.D. Lamb is in the back area here, and somebody took this clip. And got it to TMZ about how he's what he's going to do as far as a holdout. How's the off season going? How are you keeping yourself busy? Um, relaxing, man. Chilling. Working out, of course. Laying by the pool. Chilling. What are you looking forward to most next season? Winning again. Looking forward to winning. Being out there with my guys and um, making another run at this thing. Are you? Are we going to see you in Dallas for sure? next season come on pretty boy let's go let's go how you doing dog good seeing you man yes, sir. I always been you. 2019 oh you yeah that? absolutely so intro into this little thing you're doing well for yourself i think we're going to the airport together yep. you, you, will you be in dallas yeah i'll be in dallas i'll be in dallas of course he'll be in dallas of course he'll be in dallas so you know, that is, I want to say all this stuff, all this Valley who and, you know, oh, he's going to hold out this, that, and the other. That's not coming from the player. This is speculation. And through speculation and stuff, we kind of slander people left and right um, with these notions of, you know, oh, he's going to hold out. Oh, he's going to want this, that. We don't know. We don't know. Let's see what actually happens. If he holds out or if he doesn't show up on Monday, okay. Can you necessarily blame him? If you look at the track record of the Cowboys and what they do, quite frankly, you'd be better off if he did hold out and force their hands because that's the only way you get attention with the Cowboys is you literally have to put them on blast because Lord knows they're going to sell your name. Now, it's, it's kind of crazy because... Everybody is kind of hoping and praying that the Cowboys go through and get rid of players. It, it, it blows my mind away because even my son, Philly 500, Philly is even kind of getting onto the bandwagon about Micah Parsons going. But then you have the whole CeeDee Lamb thing, right? Uh, CeeDee Lamb. Uh, all of a sudden, looks like he might be holding out. Uh, JPA Football says, report a potential holdout could be coming for Pound Cowboys star wide receiver CeeDee Lamb, who isn't expected to attend the team's OTAs, per at Dallas News. Now, here's the thing. The Dallas Cowboys always have issues going after, uh, you know, going after new contracts of players. For whatever reason, they always, they always have issues problems doing these contracts so i expect there to be 
stuff leaked out about CeeDee Lamb and he's this and he's that and he doesn't do this. There's going to be things that come out because they do it with every player. They do it with Des Bryant, Zeke Elliott. They do it with Dak Prescott. They did it with, they're doing it with Micah Parsons now. Uh, it, it's absolutely insane. It is if insane. If the Dallas Cowboys allow CeeDee Lamb to hold out, uh, you, you, it's going to be an ugly, ugly year. And can, and can you believe the balls on Mark Holmes to go on Dan Silio's show and then try to say that Kellen Moore is a choke? Kellen Moore, he was actually complaining, Kellen Moore is a choke and the Eagles are going to have problems because he's a choke. No, 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 no. Your quarterback's a choke because even when Kellen Moore left, guess what happened? Kellen Moore leaves and Dak Prescott still chokes. He's like, Choker. <laughs> He's a choker. It is unbelievable. It really is unbelievable. Uh, it's, it's, it's absolutely crazy what's going on there. But the Eagles are set up to reap the rewards. Uh, there's no question about it. And when you think about the whole Dak Pre uh, the whole Micah Parsons thing, which I talked about yesterday. I've talked about how many times have I talked about it yesterday, the day before, weeks before, two weeks before, years before. I've been saying this. That this guy bleeds green. He's a future Philadelphia Eagle. And it's going to happen. I really think at some point it's going to happen. Here we Guess go. Guess what? We've been talking about this over here for weeks. And now it's hot topics. I'm telling you. I mean it. You get future Eagles news today. Today on this channel. You do. Because the hot topics that are going to come usually... We've already discussed them and been dived into them long before. Uh, A.J. Brown, people thought I was crazy. Saquon Barkley, people thought I was crazy. Mm -hmm. Now you have this stuff with uh, all of a sudden we start talking about Josh Allen. Now they're talking about Josh Allen. Now you have this whole thing with Micah Parsons. Now they're talking about Micah Parsons. But not only do they talk about Micah Parsons, they're taking it to absolutely crazy levels with Micah Parsons, okay? So crazy that WIP put out a, a poll whether or not the Eagles should trade for Micah Parsons. Crazy to me, shit. that loses the, the whole reality of the Micah Parsons situation, okay? Because... The, the way you're going to get Micah Parsons is not in a trade. The Dallas Cowboys are not going to trade Micah Parsons to the Eagles. I have never suggested that. I have never said that. I have never believed that. When you get Micah Parsons is when he becomes a free agent, mm -hmm. which is probably, what, two years? I'm assuming Dallas will pick up the last year of his uh -huh. contract, and it's going to get ugly. And when it gets ugly... And then he shakes free. That's when you have a chance. Now, if Dallas wants to trade him to the Philadelphia Eagles, I would trade for Micah Parsons in a second. I believe Micah Parsons is a really, really good player. And these people are absolutely crazy in Dallas. They're absolutely crazy to be all upset about him podcasting and talking. Like, you're crying about, oh, Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons is crying and he's talking and he says too much and he's getting on everybody's nerves. Shut up! Shut up! I mean, really? That's what you're worried about in Dallas? Like, the guy doesn't get arrested. He's not getting uh, pulled over for drunk driving. He's not involved in any crimes. He's not doing anything like that. Mm -hmm. All he's doing is going on uh, podcasts and telling Autograph his signing opinion. Shows. Well, when it become illegal for these guys, I don't care if it's Darius Slay. I don't care who it is. When does it become illegal for them to give their opinion? You don't have to like their opinion, and you can actually go after and attack their opinion. I'm all for that. I've had, you know, things Darius Slay has said I didn't like when he talked about tackling stuff. But, man, he could say it. Mm -hmm. And because Micah Parsons goes out there on a podcast and talks, the Dallas Cowboys, their fans, their media, the whole mm -hmm. organization, they want to get rid of the guy. It's gotten so bad it's that crazy. they're talking about... There's actually a, a poll for a trade for Parsons to the Eagles. That's insane. That's insane. It's hilarious to me. I never suggested that the Dallas Cowboys would trade Michael Parsons to the Eagles. I'm one that believes you don't trade within a division, okay? Now... That said, the Eagles have done it. They traded Donovan McNabb to Washington. I don't think the Dallas Cowboys would trade him to the Eagles. But I do think that Parsons wants to be an Eagle. Okay. I do think at some point 
he's going to try to be an Eagle. Yeah, and I think it's okay. going to be when he's a free agent. When he goes to get his new contract, that's when the Eagles are going to make their move. That's when they're going to make the move. Unless, unless they snag somebody like Josh Allen or something like that. Remember, next year, okay, after this season, the Eagles only have uh, Bryce Huff and... Um, and and uh, Nolan Smith, those are your only two real pass rushers. Brandon Graham is gone. I think he's retiring. Josh Sweat is last year of his contract. I don't think he's coming back. So when we talk about going out and getting another pass rusher, yes, yes, the Eagles they really definitely want to do it. But would Dallas actually trade Mike Parsons? I think that's going a little too far. I don't see that happening. I see Micah Parsons as a guy that comes over when his contract expires. That is when uh, I think it's going to happen. And and that is also why, leading up to this, this draft, you have to keep your eye on the Josh Allen situation. I have been saying this for weeks, and now people are okay. finally starting to take notice. Shout out to, to my son, Philly 500. You know He's putting in the work and everything else. But I'm going to say that here's the thing. Here's the thing that I want to try and teach people, if I can, is just because you don't agree with somebody else doesn't mean that it's not worth having a conversation with. And see, it's nice to actually step away from point of views of all of us, of all of us cowboy fans and stuff, and look at things from outside how other people view us, which is one of the reasons why he, he mentioned that I was on Dan Salio's show. See, when you're, you're knee-deep in the middle of stuff, you don't necessarily see the big picture. And that's why it's always good to listen to a Philly 500 because see what they think and they see from the outside or Dan Salio and get their take and things like that. So that's one of the reasons why I try not to uh, not listen to what other people have to say. And in fact, I have to say that um, Jason M., who is a 40 Winer fan, whose team choked in the Super Bowl. Yes, I'm talking about your team that choked in the Super Bowl, just like the Eagles did. Congratulations on getting there. We got to get there and hopefully don't choke like you guys have your last three trips. Um, he mentioned something that brought me back in, you know, back with this piece of humble pie that um a few weeks ago i was talking about a pastor a minister uh from tyler texas whose church had burned down and i said i needed to try and be more careful in my choice of wording and using some cuss words especially when my father watches sometimes i get very passionate and overzealous and i end up you know, forgetting what I'm saying. I just, if you know me, I am not scripted. I just say what's on my mind. I just say what's on my mind. And it's not that I'm trying to do it intentionally. It's just, I guess I'm just too much in the gutter. And I keep trying to do better. But I appreciate, Jason, you reminding me that I am a potty mouth and that I do need to do better. So I appreciate that. In the meantime, you know this is Dallas Cowboys, and we are the drama that keeps on giving for everybody. Understand, the Dallas Cowboys, everything they do is what everybody talks about. Other teams, well, they got wide receivers that are out there racing, causing accidents, walking away from said accidents with injuries, and don't talk to the police for days. Somehow, C.D. Lamb and whether or not he's going to show up to OTAs is a bigger story. Might be something wrong with that. All right, good people. I hope you have a great day. It is Taco Tuesday. I'm headed back up to work on that farmhouse. Got to paint the bathroom and get the medicine cabinet up and all that kind of stuff and lay some laminate flooring. Got my son, Michael Anthony Fitness here, who'll be in the house to give me a hand getting that stuff done. He's going to be doing some work and stuff with me, which will 